Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show, where you will hear about everyday miracles happening in people's lives. God is real and sends his angels to help us, especially when we pray to them. Today, I have one story, so let's begin. First of all, thank you for creating this channel, which provides a way to share our spiritual experiences with others. Your videos have reignited my faith that God and His hosts are really here, and they do perform small and great miracles every day. What I want to share with your audience is a little unusual, but I think everyone will find it relevant, especially in light of what we see happening around us on a daily basis. I will be discussing what I learned about the spiritual side of tobacco addiction and how I stopped smoking permanently using a powerful form of prayer called decrees. This information is not new by any means as it originates from Eastern and other spiritual texts. Please keep an open mind. So here's my story of how I beat the tobacco habit. For over 30 years, I had been smoking at least 30 cigarettes a day. That's about three smokes every waking hour. I tried to quit numerous times without any success. But when I did try, I usually broke out in a rash or developed serious emotional or mental strain. I was a slave to this habit and it was slowly killing me. I knew it, but I was helpless to stop it. I was desperately looking for a solution and finally appealed to God for his help. Then one day, while talking to an old friend, John, about my predicament, he introduced me to his church's teachings on addictions. He said there's some very interesting and revolutionary information on what causes addictions from a spiritual standpoint and how we can overcome almost any addiction permanently and usually very quickly. Because I was open to just about anything at this point, I told him, I'm in, tell me what to do. John said, okay, hang on to your seat. First, I need to tell you what I learned about addiction from an unseen spiritual perspective. So he started explaining about discarnate and mass entities, which he said are the primary cause behind all addictions and many other very bad things we are witnessing more and more in the news. This is what he told me. A discarnate entity or disembodied spirit is the consciousness of an individual that is often left behind after the physical body dies. It's the residual part of the self that embodies that person's accumulated negative mental and emotional energy. Energy that was once God's pure light, but was misused while they were in embodiment. This dense accumulated energy typically includes addictions to tobacco, for example, emotional or mental traumas, as well as mankind's negative momentum such as hatred, lust, depression, murder, rape, or child abuse. The list goes on. The word entity literally means existing thing or self-contained existence. Depending on its misuses or momentums, a discarnate entity may be functioning with or without the soul, but it still has all the same addictions, emotional or mental issues, or desires to murder or rape, for example, that were present while in physical embodiment but now it has no physical vessel in which to perpetuate these intense thoughts and feelings. It needs a host, just like a parasite does. Depending on the mix of negativity they have accumulated around them, along with any personal traumas that were still unresolved at the time of death, these all dictate in what lower level or plane of consciousness the discarnate will gravitate to. For example, Many have reportedly seen ghosts or spirits wandering about and even physically interacting in some way. This is because these entities still have some connection or opening to the physical plane. On the other extreme, many discarnates harbor such dark consciousness that they gravitate to the deepest dark levels of the astral plane where only a complete desolation and the worst evil ones are found. This is what many Christians call hell. We could dig even deeper into this particular subject, but for now, let's circle back to our main topic. John went on to explain what mass entities are and how all entities can influence large groups of people to misuse God's energy. A mass entity is an accumulation of tens, hundreds, or even thousands of individuals' negative energy, such as hatred, suicide, lust, greed, violence, depression, insanity, etc. They can cover huge areas of space. For example, for some time now, the Tenderloin District in San Francisco 
has been a hotbed of homelessness, drug addiction, and mental and emotional disturbed people. Right now, there is likely a mass entity hanging over that area like a huge dark pool of negativity. The intense momentums of despair, depression, and insanity this mass entity embodies have a negative influence on those occupying this district who are also carrying these same momentums. So, these people are strongly encouraged to continue their addictions along with their mental and emotional states of consciousness. Not only that, but by misusing God's energy in this way, they are unfortunately also feeding this mass entity and thus perpetuating and strengthening its own existence. John continued, Some entities take on a particular form and even have names. Since we are concerned about your smoking addiction, let's describe what the tobacco entity looks like. This entity takes on the form of a huge fat worm that wraps itself tightly around the person who smokes. Their head is typically attached to the third eye of the individual, which is one of the seven major spiritual centers taught in Hinduism. People who have spiritual vision have seen this entity, which is why I can describe it to you now. The names of this entity are Nicola, Nicholas, and Inhala. As mentioned, both discarnate and mass entities attach to and live off the energy of those in physical embodiment because the living are still receiving God's energy and the dead are not. So in your case, their survival depends on keeping you addicted to tobacco. Some people may have five or even 100 entities attached to them, all living off the energy that one person is misusing on a daily basis. I asked John, so how do I get rid of these tobacco entities? It looks like I've had them on me for 30 years now. No wonder every time I try to quit, I face intense mental, emotional, and physical problems that go away as soon as I start smoking again. This is all very strange information you're sharing, but it's all starting to make a lot of sense now. He said, yep, as they say, truth is often stranger than fiction. But this information has actually been around for a long time. The most recent accounts can be found in the teachings from the Theosophical Society, the I Am Activity, and the Summit Lighthouse, the spiritual organization I belong to. So the way to solve a spiritual problem like entities is with spiritual fire. With intense determination and resolve, you have to invoke God's fire into your body, mind, and soul to such a degree that not only are you cut free from these entities, but they are bound, removed, and transmuted back into God's pure energy. Remember, all energy originates from God and is neither created nor destroyed. John continued, One of the most effective ways to invoke God's fire to free yourself of your tobacco entities is through the use of a powerful form of prayer called decrees, which thousands in our church all over the world practice regularly. Decrees are a combination of specifically formulated spoken prayers, fiats, and affirmations, together with focused visualizations. They also call to the Lord's host, including certain archangels, angels, saints, and ascended masters, to direct their tremendous momentums of God's light for a specific purpose, which in our case is the binding and removal of the tobacco entity and its inherent addiction from your world. I told John I do pray and have meditated before, so I'm going to give this a shot. Nothing else has worked. I just know something very powerful has a hold of me and doesn't want to let me go. It's time to call in some heavenly help. I became a member of the Summit Lighthouse and started giving the decrees they published. After a couple of weeks, I had managed to stop smoking for one week before going to one of their international conferences. But while there, I became extremely agitated to the point where I couldn't sit in the chapel for more than 45 minutes at a time. I had to resort to leaving the property once a day and smoking three cigarettes in a row. Then I could return and be fairly comfortable and function for the next 24 hours until the entity would raise its ugly head once more. After the conference, I decided I needed to get a lot more determined and intense with my decrees if I was going to beat this beast. So I rented a rusty cabin in Allentown, Colorado. It was high up in the pristine mountains with only the bare necessities, but very peaceful. It was the perfect place to do my daily ritual of decrees, and I was determined not to return back home with these tobacco entities hanging on me. I was giving over three hours of decrees daily and started to feel lighter and more confident in my resolve to overcome this 30-year addiction. One morning, as I awoke, I heard a voice say to me, Fast today and don't smoke. 
My response was, okay, I can do that for one day. I was attempting to limit the number of cigarettes I was smoking, keeping it under 10 a day, and making constant calls to be able to stop completely. I reached for my decree book and began my daily decrees. About an hour later, I began to crave a cigarette and decided to make some herbal tea to get my mind off smoking. On my way out of the room, I paused and began to leaf through my decree book. I happened upon an entity decree, which I had not noticed before. It was a long decree, which focused on the nicotine entity. So I decided to stand right where I was and give it. As I was saying it, I realized there was a being of light standing next to me. He was holding a sword and began cutting this large slug off my body. It started at the crown of my head and wrapped around me all the way to my feet. It took several slashes to cut it off completely. After the entity was gone, the being disappeared. My heart and soul were overcome with love and gratitude for this tremendous blessing and miracle from God. I also realized that everything John had shared with me was true because I saw it with my own eyes. A great burden had been lifted from my mind, body, and soul. I can't begin to express this newfound feeling of freedom. From that day forward, the craving for cigarettes was gone. For a few days, I repeated the entity decree to make sure the craving didn't come back. Since then, I have never desired a cigarette, nor have I experienced any negative reactions, agitations, rashes, raw nerves, etc. I give all the glory to God and His host for helping me slay the tobacco entity and finally become free from its addiction. Today, I am filled with God's love and light and want everyone to know that you too can be free from any addiction if you have the desire, will, determination, and enlist the help of God's host to cut you free. With God, all things are possible. If you are interested to learn more about any of the information I shared in this video, please see the links in the video description. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Miracles can and do happen every day. How about you? If you have a special story you would like to share on this channel, please send it to us for a possible future show.